Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to the beginning. Genesis. Genesis. To the very beginning. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis means beginning. Okay? Today, follow me along. Word for word. Verse by verse of the scriptures that you and I will be looking at today. Follow me along in the scriptures. Be a Berean. Okay? Search the scriptures, whether these things be so. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Don't take my word for it. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Check me out in the scriptures. Hold me accountable in the scriptures. Okay? Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Okay? Check me out. Be a Berean. Okay? For once in your life, man, woman, be a Berean. Okay? Be a Berean. Today, Lord willing, we are going to attempt to answer through Scripture a very good question that was asked of me by a beloved, beloved sister. What's the difference between a spirit and a soul? Now, we, most, I would reckon, most people understand at the least that there's a difference between a spirit and a soul. But, you know, how, how do you go about um, telling what the difference is? Okay, And God forbid, don't go on Google. Oh, God forbid. Okay. Don't go, don't Google search what is a spirit or what is a soul. God forbid. Don't do that. Perfect example. Uh, you go on your, on your Google search and ask, uh, put in what is a person? What do you get? Nothing but uh, philosophy and vain deceit. All this philosophy of uh, uh, telling you what a person is. When the scriptures... Tell you simply what a person is. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? That's what a person is. It's quite simple. But see, you Google search what is a person, and I think right away one of the ones that came up first was sick mind Freud or Nietzsche. Philosophy. The same could be, uh, the same example is what is a man or what is a woman? This pathetic perverse, disgusting, yea hath God said about gender. It's one of the stupidest things. What is a man? Okay? What is a man? According to scripture, a man is so is one who has, and beg your pardon, I'm going to be blunt, has a phallus. A woman does not. Okay? Very simple, but see, Jesuit uh, news speak, okay? Jesuit, yea, hath God said, that controls Google and everything else? Well, I'm a woman, but I identify as a man. Or I'm a man, and I identify as a woman. You're a devil. Okay? It's simple. Where do you find the answer to what a man is? Or a woman is? Scripture. Okay? Same with spirit and soul. Don't look online. The answers to everything you need it's right here in the scripture. Now, granted, you you, you got to pray to the Lord. It's like, okay, Lord, uh, show me, uh, show me truth. Okay, that's uh, one second, please. Yes, you got to ask the Lord, show me truth. And if you ask the Lord to show you truth through the scripture, He'll show it to you. He will show it to you. Okay. If you're lost, he's going to show you the need of him. If you're saved, to grow you in faith in Christ Jesus. But when it comes to answering a question like this, what saith the scripture? Which is how I'd like you to be. You have a question about something? Search the scriptures, first and foremost. An example, um, or example. Webster's 1828 Dictionary, which I use, which I recommend. 
I do not go to Webster first to define a word, especially if it's in Scripture. I look in Scripture first because our dear, beloved Noah Webster, um, his work is fallible. Okay, there are many occasions when Webster, in his dictionary, has fouled up the definition of a word. Many a time. And that one that's online, um, don't even bother with that anymore because they did something to it. The uh, Webster's 1828 online differs from the printed edition of the 1828. It does. It does. Check out the word speed. You'll see what I'm talking about. Always check scripture first. Scripture first. It's okay to use a dictionary, yes, but to define a word, to find the meaning of anything, it's in the scriptures. Find it. But now, okay, gotta gotta keep on track here. Okay, because this video, we could branch off into so many juicy, delicious rabbit trails, but about answering the question. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 3. We're going to utilize what is known as the law of first mention. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 3. Here is the Godhead, not the satanic, pagan Roman Catholic trinity. The trinity is a satanic uh, creation. Okay? It's satanic. All right, three persons make one God. That's insane. Okay, this is the Godhead. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capital S, Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the water. And God said, God spoke, you know, God said, Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. Okay? God said, let there be light. And there was light. We've gone over these before. So you see God, Spirit, and said. Okay? The Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Word. Right here, the Godhead. All right? But, First reference of the word spirit is right there in verse 2. And darkness was, was upon this, the face of the deep. And the capital S Spirit of God. Mr. David Daniel Smiley at Chick Publications has gone on record to say that the capitalization thing isn't a big deal. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Now, if you are to read the uh, facsimile copy of the 1611 King James uh, Version, okay, you will notice that the capitalization thing is all over the place. You'll notice that about the 1611. Praise the Lord, okay? You got to remember about the 1611, the English language as was once known, not the American English, okay? And you, you Englishmen in England... You have every right to get on us Americans of how we've butchered the English language. I give you that, okay? But the English language was in its infancy, especially in printed form. You read Tyndale's translation and the spelling, how that's spelled, and the use of capitalization here and there, up and down, up, okay? you got to keep that in mind. And the Word of God itself went through a purification process of uh, spelling, grammar, uh, capitalization, and stuff like that, where we arrive at, you know, what we have that you can buy generally today. Uh, they call it the pure Cambridge edition. But Mr. David Daniels, who only attacks truly saved people, <laughs> yeah, well, not really, but uh, I remember someone who I actually think is saved questioned Mr. David Daniels about something, and he jumped on that poor guy. Uh, but yet, you got to remember, David Daniels called James White his brother. Jesuit James White. But he said that the capitalization thing was not that big of a deal. I beg to differ. First appearance of the word spirit is in capital S. 
the Spirit of God. When you see a capital S Spirit, unless it is at the beginning of the verse, it is a reference to God Himself. Because you got to remember, God is one God comprised of a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not three persons. That's satanic insanity. Okay? One God. Okay? One God. So when you see a capital S spirit, it's talking about, it's a reference unto God himself. Okay? Uh, go to Genesis chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 3. We talk about this in a video, um, uh, uh, an expository video on 1 John chapter 4, um, which will be in the description box. We expound on this quite deeply in that video. Um, any more questions on this, watch that video. But uh, Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now the very first appearance of spirit in scripture was a capital S spirit talking about God himself. Okay, Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 3. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, look at this, don't look at me, look at the scriptures. You need to be reading the authorized version. Okay? My lowercase s spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Right here, God set in order the longevity of man's lifespan. Did it happen right away? No, it didn't. It was a gradual declining of men's years, okay? Because you got to remember, Adam lived almost a thousand years. Okay, it was at this point when men's lifespan started gradually decreasing and he put a limit, okay, on man's life, 120 years. There are those reports out there that there are uh, uh, men out there, mankind, that have lived past 120 years. I don't buy it. I buy what the scripture says, okay. But note that lowercase s. Capital S Spirit is the Lord Himself. When you see this lowercase s, especially in this context, my spirit, it is what He is imparting. His spirit that He is imparting, not Himself. Okay? Because you've got to remember, in this dispensation, okay, uh, Genesis chapter 6, okay, this is the dispensation of the patriarchs. The Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident in the believer as he is today the Lord is that spirit okay the Holy Ghost the Lord is that spirit the spirit of the Lord could come and go come and go there was no permanent dwelling of the spirit in this dispensation or under the dispensation of the law okay it was not there so this lowercase s is what he is imparting but not himself okay does that make sense? Okay. Now go to Genesis chapter 4, uh, 41. I want to show you this. I want to show you this. Genesis chapter 41. We want verses 37 and 38. Now, first reference was uppercase S. The Lord himself. Another reference, second one, lowercase S. His, the spirit that he is imparting. Okay. Not he himself. Okay. Not he himself. He is giving him of his spirit, but not he himself in that person. Okay? Check this out. Genesis chapter 41, verses 37 on to verse 38. Check this out. And look who is saying this. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Now this Pharaoh... Uh, during the time of Joseph, was a good ruler. He was kind unto the children of Israel. He was far more just than the Pharaohs that would come after him. But you do have to remember this about Pharaoh and the Egyptians. They worshiped a multitude of gods. Okay? 
from Babylon to Egypt is where the Trinity came from. Okay? Not from God, but from Satan. Okay? Pharaoh was thought to be a god. One of many. He thought that of himself. If you were to continue reading here, um, uh, where is that? Where he says, uh, in verse 44, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. See, the Egyptians saw Pharaoh as God, as a God. Okay? And he himself also believed that he was. Okay? And he was able to lift Joseph up to almost demigod status in the eyes of his people. In the eyes of the Egyptians. Okay? But, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants because to the Egyptians, Pharaoh, Pharaoh was a god. And look at this. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the capital S Spirit of God is in? There was no permanent dwelling, indwelling of the Holy Ghost within this dispensation. It was not there. That is what makes this dispensation today, the time of the Gentiles, so unique, so significant. Okay? That God himself dwells in every single truly saved, born again, converted uh, believer of the church of God. Okay? He dwells within them permanently. Your sin ain't going to make him go away because he's not there because he has sealed you. You haven't sealed yourself. It wasn't like that in this dispensation. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Pharaoh said this because you've got to remember the mindset of Pharaoh and his people. Pharaoh thought he was a capital G God. And his people thought that Pharaoh was a capital G God. So Pharaoh's mindset is like, well, here, he's got the Spirit of God too. Coming from Pharaoh, who himself thought he was a god. That's why that's like that. That's why it is written, because that's how Pharaoh meant it. Because Pharaoh, in his own mind, even among his own people, he thought he himself was a capital G god. Of course, he was not. Okay? All right? Okay? Now, another lowercase in Exodus chapter 31. Check this out. Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31, okay? There is the Spirit of God, which is himself, capital S, and the Lord is that Spirit, and there is that Spirit of God that God himself imparts onto someone, but is not himself, okay? It is not himself. It is his Spirit that he imparts into somebody, but not he himself within this dispensation, not on a permanent basis, okay? you got to remember that. Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 under verse 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bazaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. Now check this out. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, lowercase s. A sp his Spirit that he has imparted, but not he himself. In this dispensation, okay? This is now under the law. The Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident within any, not even in Moses, okay? Not even in Moses, even though Moses is in heaven. Obviously, obviously. But the Holy Ghost was not a permanent seal in the believers in this dispensation, okay? He wasn't. So, lowercase s, what the Lord is saying, he's imparting his spirit into this man, but not he himself as the seal until the day of redemption because well, it wasn't for this dispensation. Do you see? Okay? And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge. So fear of the Lord departing from evil produces what? Knowledge, as we talked about in the last video, and in all manner of workmanship. Okay? Because they were to build the tabernacle and the ark and that kind of stuff. 
and all the stuff that went for that. God is very meticulous. God is very specific. That's why when you read about the building of the ark and the temple, uh, the tabernacle and stuff, get you say, and you know the measurements and stuff like that. God is a very specific God. He says what he means. He means what he says. He's very specific. Okay. Verse four: to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in cutting of stones to set them, and in carving of timber to work. In all manner of workmanship. So the Spirit of God was given unto who? Basilio. For to make these things. Okay? But it was not God himself. The capital S. Seal. Like we have today. Okay? Because you remember. you got to remember. You had to keep the law. You had to have faith and works under the law. Eternal security was not a guarantee under the law. No matter what the heretics want to tell you today, okay? Eternal security was not in the Garden of Eden, was not in the dispensation of the patriarchs, was not in the dispensation of the law, okay? All right? The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God could come and go, come and go. It was imparted to them, okay? But it wasn't he himself as a permanent resident, okay? You got to remember that. Spirit of God, you read about this. The Spirit of God came upon people, okay? Like uh, um, uh, Samson and the Spirit of God, which we're going to look at. Ezekiel, okay? But let's continue. Now, go to Ephesians chapter 1. See, this whole thing about the capital lowercase s is important. It is important. It is. It is. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 on to verse 14. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy, capital S, Spirit of Promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Seal. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Hey, Mr. Mark the Mess, once saved, always saved. You come to the Lord on His terms, he saves you. You are sealed because you have the Lord himself living within you permanently until the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Seal. This right here. Ah, this right here. The distinguishing mark of this dispensation was not in the Garden of Eden, was not in the dispensation of the patriarchs, was not under the law, but it is today. You come to the Lord on His terms, he, and okay, and also too, gotta, gotta hit this, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, read, go ahead and pause the video and read the context, the entire chapter, on your own time, okay, but 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, okay, now the Lord is that spirit. Well, you know what? Let's read verses 15 on to verse 17. But even unto this, unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. Those who want to justify themselves by keeping the law, and you don't keep the law today to stay saved or be saved. Okay, those who say that are speaking of words to no profit. Okay, like Mark the Messenger says that you got to keep the Ten Commandments to be saved today. No, 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 okay? Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that capital S Spirit. He is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost. That's the Lord. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. One Lord. One God. Okay? You have the Lord, our Father. Jesus Christ living within you if you come to him on his terms. Okay? Broken, contrite, and fear of him you call upon his name. Okay? But, now the Lord is that spirit. 
And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay? The Lord is that Spirit. And unlike other dispensations, once saved, always saved. Eternal security, you come to Him on His terms, and He saves you, you're eternally secure. You're going to heaven. We are once saved, always saved. You can't lose what is not yours. Okay? Okay? But now, now, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Okay? Now, what we have looked at thus far, what is spirit? Okay? What is spirit? Go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes, come on Brad, get there, I'll get there. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 11. We want verses 3 on to verse 5 in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. It is what it is. Okay? Where the tree falls, there it is. It is what it is. Okay? He that observeth the wind will not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Verse 5. As thou knowest not the way of the lowercase s, spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Hmm. So look at that verse. So spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb. And spirit right there is associated with winds and clouds. But yet, if you just stay there uh, gazing at the clouds and the wind all day, where the tree falleth, there it is. It is what it is. The clouds, they are what they are. You're going to stare all day at the clouds. You're, you're not going to get anything done for the Lord. Okay? But now, go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Now we're going to see something here. Okay, pay attention. John chapter 3. John chapter 3, we want verses 5 on to verse 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the capital S Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, talking about the spiritual. Born of water. Catholics and Charismatics come to this and say, Well, this means you got to be baptized in water. No. No. Again, when you are birthed into this world, you come forth of the matrix, okay? The term, her water broke, okay? That's what that's talking about, Catholic, okay? That's what he's talking about. Except a man be born of water, her, her water breaks, okay? And of the Spirit, capital S, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, born of the Spirit, God Himself, is, lowercase s, Spirit. And that which is of flesh is flesh. All these Catholic coadjutors, all the religions of flesh, ministers of the flesh, that you got to do something to save yourself, okay? Or that you're a chosen one because of your skin color. <laughs> yeah, more on that in another video. Yeah, reverse racism, that's what all that is, okay? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Which is, that which is born of the flesh is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. And that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, denoting God Himself, is Spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, must be born again. Right here, look at this. The wind bloweth where it listeth, 
and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the capital S spirit. Born of the spirit. Hmm. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse 24. Okay? Spirit. The spirit of God moved. The spirit of God, okay? Spirit is likened unto what? It moves. Number one, we see here that it moves. And verse 8 here in John chapter 3, it's likened unto wind. Okay? There are some people out there who claim to be of the church and the living God, but rather they're a Christian, that say they don't believe in ghosts. Spirits. Well, okay, you're a Christian. Okay, you're a Christian, okay? And you say you don't believe in ghosts. Uh, do you not have the Holy Ghost? The Spirit of God, right? And in this dispensation, you have God Himself within you. Unlike the other dispensation. you got to rightly divide the word of truth. That, that never made sense to me. Someone who is actually saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who says, well, I don't believe in ghosts. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 time out. You have the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. But yet you don't believe in ghosts. That doesn't make no sense to me. But, see, the wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh. And whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the capital S, Spirit. So Spirit is what? Likened unto wind. It moves, but it also gives life. But see, there is more than one Spirit. Okay? There is more than one Spirit. There is the Spirit of God. There is the Spirit of man. There is the Spirit of the beast. Okay? <laughs> okay? Okay? There are, there are different, we're not going to get into the different kinds of spirits. But John chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse 24. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. The Hebraic people descended from Shem. Okay? Not a Hamite, not a Japhethite, okay? But of Shem, the called out ones of Shem. The called out ones, Hebrews, from Shem, okay? That's what that's talking about, okay? What is a Jew? Uh, check that uh, vid those videos out if you have any questions what scripturally a Jew is, okay? Verse 23. But the hour cometh. And now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in lowercase as spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such, seeketh such to worship him. God is a, capital S, spirit. God is a spirit. Capital S denoted with God, okay? Today we are sealed with that Holy Spirit, capital S, the Lord Himself. Okay? God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in lowercase s, spirit and in truth. See, when you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, when you come to Him on His terms and you don't boot the door out of the way, okay? You are sealed with Himself. The Lord lives in you. Okay? And the Lord living in you imparts things to you okay so you got God himself living in you permanently but God within you living in you permanently imparts things of himself onto you okay see how that works but see God is a spirit you check your NIV your ESV your New American Standard I'm not sure about the non King James Version but you check the modern Bibles of today they take that A out of there. The difference that one letter can make. Okay? One letter. You take that A out of that verse, which the Bibles do. Okay? It says God is spirit. That A is there to give you what? Distinction. That there is not only one spirit. There is only one capital S spirit. Yes. 
Okay? But God is a spirit. You, see, you people who say, don't judge, don't judge. You only say that to cover up your sin. Okay? That's the only reason why you say that. We are to judge. We are to judge according to a perfect standard, the authorized version. Okay? We are to judge. And we are to judge the spirits. How? According to the scriptures. Okay? According to the scriptures. If you don't have that A in there, how are you to know what spirit is what? Huh? If you have a Bible that removes A and says God is spirit, how are you to know which one is which? Are you to know even if there is a difference? Because you look at the charismatics when they get there, blah, 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 and do that Kundalini uh, uh, snake in the spine stuff. They say, that's from God. No, that's from Satan. But how would they know? Because God is spirit, right? See, that is there for distinction. That you will be able to, through the scriptures, to determine which spirit is which. You take that A out of there. Hey, what do you got to do? You got to go to a Jesuit trained cemetery to tell you what spirit is what. Or you go to some dingbat woman named Diana, Bible is <laughs> Mark of Beast, to tell you which one. Or Jean Bashoff, who is in hell right now. Okay? No. No. God is a spirit. Okay? And the spirit, what? Moves. It's likened unto wind. Okay? Go to Ezekiel chapter 37 now. Ezekiel chapter 37. Okay? Well, uh, the Lord was putting this together. I talked to my best friend, and he mentioned this, and the Lord's like, Brad? Oh, thank you! <laughs> you know? So, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 on to verse 10. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the or case as spirit of the Lord. Okay? What the Lord imparted to Ezekiel, not he himself on a permanent basis. Okay? Okay? Because you read, uh, the spirit of God would come on Elisha when the minstrel played. Okay? Because the Holy Ghost in this dispensation under the law could come and go, come and go. There was no permanent seal. Okay? All right? The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and sent me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. So the spirit is moves. It can move you because it is likened unto wind. Okay? Okay? And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, they, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And see, the spirit that is in you of God doesn't call you to be idle, but moves you to read scripture, to pass out tracts, to do what is right. Like it says in Zechariah, not by might nor by strength, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Okay? The spirit moves you, leads you, guides you. Okay? Is it the Lord himself that's leading you or guiding you? Or is it the spirit of this world? That spirit of Antichrist. Which one is it? Okay. Verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again, again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath 
breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy, say unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So, these bones that were dead were made alive, and then they had breath in them. But they were made alive. How so? Okay. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Come on, fingers, work with me. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. So, breath, wind that moves, spirit, okay? We can't see spirits, can we? Like ghosts that haunt house, houses, devil spirits. Okay? They're spiritual. Okay? We can't see them. It's wind. It moves. It moves things. Okay? Alright? It gives life. Spirit. Breath gives life. Wind. Okay? Also, see, spirit also... Verse 16 and 17 in Second Timothy chapter 3. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Given by inspiration. Breathed. God breathed. Okay? And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And, okay, so, what do we see about spirit? It moves. It's likened unto wind, breath, okay? If you stay there and watch the clouds and the, and the wind going, just sit there idly and just observe it, you won't sow. Because wind, you know, like a sail. Think of a sail. Wind pushes into the sail, it drives the boat. Okay? And the Spirit of God will move you, lead, uh, lead you. But it is also life. It inspires. Okay? Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the, capital S, Spirit, the Lord Himself. You're walking after the Lord. He's within you. And by His Spirit, He lives in you, but He's going to guide you on to things. That's what you know about in Ecclesiastes. Okay? Where the tree falls, there it is. There it is what it is. There it is. It's falling. What are you going to do about it? it? There it is. You observe the clouds because, oh, uh, if you do that all day, what are you going to accomplish? Okay? You have been called, if you're saved, as an ambassador of Christ, having the word of reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation, no matter what your calling is, you're in the ministry of reconciliation. And His Spirit is going to guide you and lead you. Okay? Alright? But in Romans chapter 8, now verse 2, For the law of the capital as Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Spirit is life. Spirit is life. Matthew chapter 6. Okay? Matthew chapter 6. One second. Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Talking about the unsaved man. The spirit is wind. It moves. It guides. It is life. It inspires. Okay? 
but it is also light. Okay? Well, right there it talks about if the light is in, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Talking about, you know, Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light, a counterfeit. Every living person, spirit, soul, and body has light in their eyes. It is the life that the Lord has allowed them to have. Okay? Have you ever seen into the eyes of a dead person before? Or of a dead animal before? You know, you know when you see a photograph, you see the redness on the eyes? That's the light of life that our Lord gives to everybody who is birthed into this world, born of water. Okay? Everyone has light in their eyes. They have life. They have the spirit of life given unto them. Not every one of us, okay, not everyone is saved, born again, converted. But see, even you lost devils, you have light in your eyes. That light is life given to you of Jesus Christ. Okay? He is life. Okay? He is the light. He has given you life. Okay? Jesus Christ has given you life. He is God. He is our Father. He is the Creator. If you're alive, it's because Jesus Christ has allowed you to be alive and has willed you to be alive. Okay, like it says in Revelation chapter 4. Okay, He created all things for His pleasure because He wanted to. You're alive not by a mistake. Your mommy and daddy might not have wanted to have planned on you, but the Lord did. The Lord did. Okay? There are no mistakes like that. All right? But we all have light in our eyes. Light behind the eyes. Someone who is dead, like a dead animal, look at, yeah, if you, I'm sure some, some of you murderers, I'm not going to name who, uh, would know this, but you look in the eyes of a dead person, there's no light in their eyes. My mother, I looked into her eyes when she was dead on that hospital bed. I looked into her eyes. The light was gone. My mother's in hell. She was not saved. She had light in her eyes. She had life. Life given to her of the Lord. But she was in darkness. She was not saved. Hence, like it says here in verse 23, but if thine eye be evil, okay, Jesus Christ gives you life. Okay? Jesus Christ, I don't care if you're an atheist, you don't want to believe that, that's your problem, you deal with him at the great white throne of judgment, okay? Jesus Christ gave you life. And that life that you got in you right now, in this sagging skin suit that so many of you worship, okay, it's a, the light of your eyes, okay? It's in the eyes, you can see the light in their eyes. Someone who is dead, that light is gone in their eyes. That light is gone. Okay? Like I said, a photograph, you'll see in a photograph, sometimes the, their eyes will be red. It's a, ref a reflection of the light in the eyes. Look at the, some of the eyes of some of these dead mafia guys, okay? All right? All right? Go to John chapter 6, one verse. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit, lowercase s there, that quickeneth. The flesh, devil, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Okay? Spirit is like an unto wind. It moves, and it causes you to move. Okay? It is also life. Okay? Alright? Like the wind that pushes a sail. That's what spirit is. Okay? Alright? And 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Go back there again. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 4 on to verse 6. And such trust have we through Christ to God were. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, 
who hath also who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the lowercase s spirit, for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth light. Now heretics like Bible is Mark of the Beast uh, will come to this and say that the letter is death, and they'll say the scriptures. No, the letter that is being referenced there is about the law. Okay, the letter of the law, not that the scriptures. No, it's talking about the law, not the written words of scripture. Okay, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be uh, linking that uh, video for Mark the Mess and also that video about Bible is Mark of the Beast, them heretics, where we go over that in detail about this. Okay, what is being talked about here, the letter killeth. The letter of the law. The letter of the law was to kill your pride to show you that you at your best couldn't keep the law of God perfectly. Okay? That is what this is talking about. It's not talking about the letter of Scripture. It's talking about the letter of the law. That's what that's talking about. There will be videos in the description box that talk about it. Don't leave your brain dead, ignorant comments without searching the Scriptures first like a Berean. Okay? Okay, let's continue. Verse 6. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The Spirit giveth life. Okay, and again, he's talking about the letter of the law, not the Scriptures. Okay. There will be videos in the description box where we answer that accusation from you devils. Okay, If you're going to leave your stupid comments without uh, ans uh, answering the matter before you hear it, I'm going to block you. Okay, Enough of this. You, call, you say you're saved, be a Berean, uh, be a Bere uh, Berean for once in your life. Okay, Enough of that stuff. Now go to John chapter 1. So the spirit is life. Spirit of his life. Okay? Just like a wind in the sail in his life. John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 4. In the beginning was the capital W Word, and the capital W Word was with God, and the capital W Word was God. Seven times the capital W Word appears in the authorized version of the scriptures. It only appears six times in the Bible. Six, the number of man. Go figure that. Virtually all the Bibles take out 1 John 5, 7. One of the seven appearances of the capital W word. They take that one out. Because that one's talking about the Godhead. Okay, but let's continue. The same was in the beginning with God. And God said the word. Okay, the word. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at this verse. And the life was the light of men. You have life because it's given to you of the Lord. And many people out there who think they are saved and they are not, they're that light that life that they have been given from the Lord has been turned into darkness because they believe not the truth. They don't go to their creator. They go to Satan, the creation, not the creator. Okay. Hence, that light in your eyes, if you are not saved, is darkness because you're blind. Because the little G-God of this world has blinded your eyes. That light that is in you is turned into darkness. But even if you're a devil alive today, you have light in your eyes. When you die, that light will be extinguished. Because that life that God gave you is no more. Okay? Now go to Genesis chapter 2. So, spirit moves. It inspires. It is life. It is life. Okay? That's what spirit is. It moves. It inspires. Okay? We can't often see spirit. Okay? Uh, like these ghosts, these devil spirits that haunt houses, these poltergeists. Okay? Those things are real. Okay? Those things are real. All right? 
All right? They move things. They influence. They inspire. Spirit of God. God himself. God is a spirit. Okay? Meant to distinguish between which one is which. And how are you going to do that unless you have a perfect standard? And the Bibles that most Christians read have uh, that verse with the A, God is spirit taken out. So you got to go to the Catholic Jesuit trained cemetery for you to discern which one is which. Give me a break. But the spirit is life. You're alive today because of the spirit of God that has given you life. You're not, hey, unless you come to the Lord on his terms, you're not saved. You're saved when he saves you and seals you. Okay? In this dispensation. That's salvation. It's of him, not of you. But you have life. And that life, that light in your eyes, that breath that you have is given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. It don't make a hill. It doesn't matter what the price of tea in China is. It doesn't matter what you believe. That's the fact. You have life and it's been given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that life you have has been given to you so you can go and have a relationship with him, not with the world. And if you have a relationship with this world, your eye, your, that light that is in you has been darkened. Okay? Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 7. Ooh, this is good. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, made out of dirt, okay? We weren't a sniveling piece of snot, that came out of, that wiggled out of the water. We were made out of dirt. Okay? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. First reference of the word soul. A living soul. So what do we see here in the first reference of the word soul? It's God breathed. And it's of man. Uh, it's God breathed. It's God breathed. Soul. What is a soul? What is a soul? Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. But that is the very first reference of the word soul. Okay? And what do we see in verse 7? We see that man was made out of dirt. Okay? And God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And we've already determined what breath, what that is talking about. You have a spirit. Okay? Life. Breathe life. Breathe spirit into you. Okay? And man became a living soul soul. Okay? Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. Verses 4 on to verse 6. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. See, heretics want to tell you that flesh is what gives life. Uh, no, it's blood that gives life to flesh. And their argument, well, you can't have blood without flesh. What about the miracle of the blood, uh, water turned to blood in Exodus? And the, uh, uh, okay, what about that? Huh? Yeah? Um, their argument is to defend flesh. And we've already, we've in this video, the flesh profiteth nothing. Blood gives flesh its life. Hence, blood is is far more important than flesh. Okay? Because all flesh is sinful. Uh, the Son of God. God was manifest in the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay? But it's the blood. It's the blood. Okay? 
but the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely, and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it, and at the hand of man, and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For, uh, for in the image of God made he man. In the image of God made he man. Hmm. Oh, and one real quick reference here in uh, Leviticus chapter 17. See, these, these, these idiots' arguments uh, about defending the flesh uh, proves, number one, that they're lost. Uh, number two, their main argument is, well, you can't have blood without flesh. Okay? But we just saw blood is what makes flesh gives life to the flesh. Blood. It is the blood that cleanseth away sin. Not flesh. Okay? Not flesh. God could have made blood by itself to cleanse away sin. But God chose to be manifest in the flesh. Okay? To live as man. Okay? Within sinful flesh to do what man couldn't do, fulfill the law of Moses perfectly. Okay? All right? Flesh is irrelevant. It's the blood that gives uh, life to that flesh. Okay? But uh, Leviticus chapter 17, okay? Leviticus chapter 17, you know, uh, Le Leviticus chapter 17, just one verse, verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the the blood, the blood, okay? And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. All flesh is corruptible. But see, the blood which gives life to that flesh, okay, you idiot. Um, yeah, the blood of Jesus Christ was not corrupt, okay? Because that was the blood of God. Okay, God was manifest in the likeness of sinful flesh. But that blood that was in that flesh was pure because it was what gave the, the flesh life. Okay, it was the blood. Okay, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood, not the flesh. Not the flesh. A lot of these idiots, they, they to them it's for it's the flesh that maketh the atonement for this uh, an atonement for the soul. No, it's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. Okay? God who turned water to wine. God who turned water to blood. Okay? Alright? It's the blood. It's the blood. I had to mention that. I had to mention that. Okay? But we are made in the image of God. Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, so, not Thessalonians, I went a little too far, I beg your pardon, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4, therefore seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the little g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. There's that image of God again. Okay, and see, like I uh, like we spoke of at the beginning of this video. Okay, man will use philosophy to tell you what a person is. Man will use philosophy to what a man or woman is. Man will use philosophy to tell you what is a spirit or what is a soul. Hmm. Uh, and Colossians chapter two, verse nine. 
For in him, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Godhead bodily. The Godhead bodily. Okay? The Godhead bodily. The Father, who is the soul, the Word made flesh, and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? The Godhead. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? That's how it, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? Alright? God and the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians 11, just one verse here. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. Now this doesn't mean that woman isn't, doesn't have a spirit, soul, and body, but a lot of you uh, feminazis out there, uh, Eve was made for Adam, not Adam for Eve. But oh, they, you know, like that gender thing that this Satan is pulling today. Oh boy. Some of these feminazis. Oh. <laughs> okay. Woman was made for Adam. Eve was made for Adam, not Adam for Eve. Woman means of man. Okay? A lot of people hate that. A lot of you feminists hate that. Deal with it. But, okay. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, one verse. One verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, one verse. Verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? Unlike animals, we are the only creation that has a soul. Your little pet dog, Fluffy, doesn't have a soul. Your little putty cat doesn't have a soul. Your horsey doesn't have a soul. Prove it to you. I remember there was some young, disturbed young man who watched a few videos and then uh, made him aware of the truth that your pet doesn't have uh, a soul, and he was offended. And I'll, I'll never forget it. That young man in the comments said, I bet my salvation that animals have souls ah, it is your salvation isn't it there kid yes you poor creature you uh, just one verse Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 21 okay who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth spirit of the beast man became a living soul man has a soul fluffy doesn't have a soul Tigger doesn't have a soul, okay? Your horsey Thor doesn't have a soul, okay? Man is the only one that has a soul, you know, of the creation that has a soul, okay? All right? We have a soul. Man became a living soul. Hence, this is one of the reasons why many people think Satan became jealous, because he thought he, he wanted to be God, okay? He wanted to be God. But... Verse 23 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the one that the Bibles remove, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Where, where are you going, Brad? 1 John chapter 5 verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, which is the soul of the Godhead. The Word, made flesh, capital W. And the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. And these three are one. We are made in the image of God. Okay? We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? Alright? That, 
that's that's just the way that is. That is just the way that is, dear friend. Now go to John chapter 14. Okay. He said, in the image of God created he man. Okay, uh, where? Oh, one second, one second. Okay, sorry about that. Go to Genesis chapter 1, okay? Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 28. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The Trinitarian says that's talking about persons. Uh, no, it isn't. It's not even, a person isn't even mentioned there in context. The Godhead, the, the Godhead converses, okay? The Godhead converses, okay? That's what that's talking about. It's not three individual persons making one God. No, no. One God made of spirit, soul, and body. God had a body, okay? That's what that's talking about. That's not talking about three different persons, Okay, and incidentally, you Trinitarians, you won't find anywhere about the Holy Ghost being a person, will you? Because it's not three persons that make one God. That's insanity. But, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay, male and female created he them. In the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. That's what we, you're. I, you're a devil. You got a spirit, soul, and body. Okay, you're made in the image of God. That's what that means. God blessed them, and God said unto them, "Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth." Because those other other things don't have a soul like we do. Okay. Animals don't have souls. You uh, PETA-loving people, okay? That wicked woman, that vegan teacher woman, oh, I don't know if you've heard of that woman. God, oh, God forbid. What a devil that woman is. What a devil that woman is, okay? But we are made in the image of God, okay? We are made in the image of God. We all have a spirit, soul, and body, okay? But now go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Now here's where some people will get confused. And you need not be. The soul is the eternal part of who you are. Okay? The soul is the eternal part of you. See, your body is dirt. And it's going to go to the ground. From dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. The spirit. That, that life in you is going to return onto God who gave it to you. And you're going to be judged. Okay? God gave you life. It doesn't matter what you believe. God gave you life. That light that you have behind in the, your eyes, that's from God. God gave you life. Okay? He gave you life. And when you die, your body is going to go to the earth. Your spirit is going to go. You're going to be judged. And your soul is either going to be with the Lord in heaven or it's going to be in the lake of fire. Okay? Okay? The soul is the eternal, undying thing that you are. Okay? And see, people like uh, Shepherd's Ambassador and the Bullingerites, which he is, and the Jehos, they teach soul annihilationism. That you go to the lake and fire and be burned for a little while and then you're done. You're so no. No. The soul is the eternal part of who you are. So when you go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Okay. John chapter 14 verses 26 on to verse 28. <laughs> but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave on peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, that peace that passeth all understanding, which the world and Christians can't get. 
Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard, now I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto, my, unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. Now see, the Trinitarian said, see, that's, that's the first person of... Shut up. No. No. My Father is greater than I. My Father... Hey, okay, so like you're, you're scratching your head. Okay. What? What? Uh, look at verse 18. Look at verse 18, by the way. Uh, about the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. Okay? Look at verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And the Lord is that Spirit. The Holy Ghost, that's the Lord Jesus Christ who is our Father. You have the Father living within you, okay? If you're saved, born again, converted, okay? But, okay, my, my Father is greater than I, okay? Gotta give the devil his due. Mr. Ruckman, okay? He said, he, he made a, he said this right, and gotta give him his credit on this. You see the skin suit. You see the flesh. You don't see who I am. You don't see who I am. Excuse me, I'm not God. Forgive me if that, that sounded bad. But you don't see who I am. You don't see the real me. That's the soul. Okay. All you see is the sagging skin suit. That's all you see. That's all you see. Okay. You don't see my spirit. You don't see my soul. You haven't seen me a day in your life. Ruckman had this right. Amen. He did. Okay, you can't see the soul. Okay, go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verses 36 on to verse 38. John chapter 5, verses 36 on to verse 38. But I have greater witness than John, than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish... The same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Our Lord said... My father is greater than I. And right there he says, okay, right there he says, ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Verse 38. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has sent, him ye believe not. Okay? So, okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Jesus said, my father is greater than I. And right there he says, Right there you see it in verse 37. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Well, wait, wait, okay. Now now let's let's really get confusing, right? And this isn't confusing. This isn't. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Here's one of the most exclusive statements Ever, excluding all other, okay? The most absolute statement ever, absolute. Yeah. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, 
ye should have known my father also. And henceforth ye, ha ye know him and have seen him. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Time out. Whoa. Wait. Okay. Okay. Right? Right? You poor Trinitarians. You sad Trinitarians. Okay? Those of you who are deceived by the lies of the devil. Okay? Okay. Wait a minute. Right? Contradiction galore, right? No. If if you believe in the Roman, the Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic, Satanic Trinity, that's why I think of the Trinity. It's a lie. Okay? Then yeah, you're all confused, aren't you? No. No. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me, has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Now, if you're a Trinitarian, they get around that, it's like, well, it's three persons. But Scripture doesn't teach uh, one God made of three persons. The, the Muslims got it right. Attacking Catholics who are Christians. Christianity. When they say one plus one plus one equals one with the stupid Trinity, you no one plus one plus one equals three. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter your crazy mathematical equations that you want to come up with. Basic logic tells you one plus one plus one. One plus one plus one is three. And they get philosophy. They use philosophy about the Trinity. It's it's satanic. Okay. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? But yet he said, My father is greater than I. You have ne neither seen the father's shape or form or not heard his voice. But yet Jesus just said, He is the father. What's going on? Can't see the soul, can you? Can't see a soul. That's the eternal part of you as a person. Hence, Jesus is the Father, the Word made flesh, the soul of the Godhead. That's what he was talking about. He's not talking about some old man dipped in 40 weights uh, sitting up there in heaven. Okay? He's not talking about that. He's not talking about a separate person and him being a person, and that little dove that goes along and poops on everybody. Okay, no, 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 no. 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 God is a spirit. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. When Jesus said, My Father is greater than I. Okay? Okay? And you have neither, neither seen his form or shape or heard his voice. But yet he said, Hey, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The soul. Okay, people. This is not that difficult. It's not that difficult to get. The soul, the eternal part of you as a person, spirit, soul, and body, is the soul. Hence, the Father, Jesus is the Father, okay? The fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Father was the soul. The Word made flesh. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit, okay? It's not that hard. It's not as loopy, crazy, insane as the Trinitarian wants you to believe. From the inception of the Roman Catholic Satanic Church that it is, 
the first thing that they started to teach. God and three persons. That was the first thing that they started teaching. One God comprised of three people. Three persons. Scripture don't teach that. Okay? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. He was talking about the soul. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. And see, you got to remember, God has a soul. Yes, uh, Leviticus chapter 26. And the soul is the eternal part of who you are. Your body, your skin suit is going to die. Okay? It's going to return to the earth. Okay? All right? Your spirit is going to go back to God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, his body did not decay. But see, while he was alive, he did what man could not do. His, his flesh was sinful. Okay? But God, but yet, God couldn't be tempted to sin. See, you idiots who argue this, how do you reconcile God not being tempted with sin, but yet Jesus was tempted by Satan? How do you reconcile that, you idiots? How? How do you reconcile that? Was not, hey, was not Jesus tempted, right? But yet God cannot be tempted to do evil. But yet Satan tempted him to do evil. How do you reconcile that? How? How do you reconcile that, you idiots? How? If God can't be tempted to sin, yet Satan, what was Satan's temptation aimed at? The flesh. Okay? But see, Jesus did what man could not do. He kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified because he kept the law perfectly, which only he could do. You can't understand that because you're lost and you're worshiping the Vatican, you little jerk. <laughs> That's made for a select few. Forgive me that. I'm getting off on a rabbit trail. Beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Leviticus chapter 26, okay? Leviticus chapter 26. That was for John the Jerk, by the way. <laughs> Why can't you be like your, your master over there and hasten your escape to the lake of fire, you little jerk? Okay, Levit Leviticus chapter 26, verses 1 on verse 4. Ye shall make you no idols, nor grave an image, neither rear you up a standing image, Neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Uh, am I reading you the, the right one? Yes, yes. Uh, one second, one second. Okay, let's continue. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. In verse 2, I am the Lord. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. See, under the law, you have to keep the law in order to be right with God. And you keeping the law, your faith is that God would honor you for doing what he said. Verses 9 on to verse 12 in Leviticus chapter 26. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you when you do what God said according to the law under the dispensation of the law. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and will be your God and ye shall be my people. My soul shall not abhor you. This is the Old Testament under the law. Hmm. Okay. And skipping to verses 27 on to verse 30 here in Leviticus chapter 26. 
And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary to me, like he said to do in the beginning here, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat, because that's what they worship the most. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your high images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. There it is. His soul shall abhor you. Hmm. God had a soul. God has a soul. Really? Really? So that must mean God has a body. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Okay, Isaiah chapter 42. We want verses 1 on to verse 4. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 on to verse 4. If my fingers will get us there. Behold, my servant, whom I, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. Okay? I have put my spirit, lowercase s, upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait for his law. His soul. There you can see again about God having a soul. Hmm. And a person is a spirit, soul, and body. But there's only one God. Okay? Not three persons that make one God. Okay? That, that's insane. Please don't fall for that lie. Okay? And Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Verses 10 on to verse 12. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. His soul. Who was on the cross? God was on the cross. Total, complete. The Godhead. God was on the cross. See, the Trinitarian says the second person of the Trinity is the one that was on the cross. No, sir. God the Father was on the cross. Okay? God the Father was on the cross. Because Jesus is the Father. The soul of the Godhead. Okay? Total, complete, holy God was on the cross. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. If, if total, complete, utter God was not on the cross, then you're not saved. Because you do not believe that I am he, like our Lord said. Unless you believe I am he, complete and total God, you're lost. thing about this, you got to remember, brethren, Catholicism at its inception began teaching the Trinity. That was the very first thing that they started to teach. History documents that. The very first thing they started pushing was the Babylonian Egyptian Trinity. Okay? There is no Christian Trinity. It's the Godhead. And it's not three persons that make one God. It's one God comprised of a spirit, soul, and body. Like we. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? It's not that hard to figure out. Okay? But you got to remember that most, 99.9% .9 of Christianity, they're Trinitarians. Because Catholics are Christians. Christianity is Catholicos. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. 
Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. Note that soul is mentioned three times in these verses, okay? And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. God has a soul. And you read in Jeremiah about how God has a soul. But you also got to remember in Galatians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, okay? Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 7. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Made under the law, okay? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Okay? And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Okay? Just like he did in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay? God the Father, the soul of the Godhead. God the Father can be in heaven and on earth in, uh, in Christ as the soul of the Godhead. Absolutely. Great is the mystery of godliness. God is a lot bigger than we think he is. Okay? But understanding the Godhead is not that difficult. Okay? Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then heir of God through Christ, through Christ. Okay? Made of a woman. Born under... What was that, what was that say? Uh, made of a woman, made under the law. Okay, made of a woman, made under the law. Okay, and Romans chapter 8, John the Jerk doesn't understand this. Verses 3 and 4, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh, yeah, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S spirit. So, again, the flesh that God was manifest in was sinful. Okay? The word was not sinful. The flesh was. But see, he was made under the law, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, because he kept the law perfectly. He never sinned. All the temptation that came Jesus' way was not, God cannot be tempted to do evil. But the flesh could. Oh, and if you haven't figured it out by now that the flesh has a mind of its own, you're crazy. Or just a jerk. Okay? Alright. But made under the law. Made of a woman. Made under the law. To redeem those who were under the law. He kept the law perfectly. Hence, the flesh though sinful, was sanctified on the cross because he kept the law perfectly. Really difficult for you devils to understand. I understand. I get that. But if you're saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, you'll get this. Okay? You'll get this. But like I said, okay? Like I said, God has a soul. God has a soul. Okay? And on the cross, he gave up the ghost. You know that saying? He gave up the ghost. Okay? Giving up of the ghost. All right? Um, go to, let me see. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We're almost done. We're almost done. Matthew chapter 10. The soul is the eternal part of who you are. Okay? Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Matthew chapter 10, not 11, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, the soul annihilationists like Bollinger and uh, like the Jehos come to this and say, God, well, your soul gets annihilated. Look at the verse, dear friend. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. 
The soul is the eternal part of you. That's it's the eternal part of you. It cannot die. Okay? All right? But rather fear him which is able, not Cain. Haha, -ha, brother. Is able to destroy. Stop. He's able to destroy. This, hey, genius. This does not say that he will destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay? It says that he is able, the genius. Okay? Soul annihilationism is heresy. Soul annihilationism is just another way for people to justify their sins. Say, so, hey, I'm going to go to hell. My soul's going to be extinguished, burnt up like that, so uh, I have nothing to worry about. I'll suffer for a little. Really? Really? It says there that God is able to destroy both soul and body. It doesn't say that he will. Because what happens when you get to Mark chapter 9? Mark chapter 9? Mark chapter 9? Verses 43 on to verse 48. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Okay? Now he's not talking about literally, okay, self-mutilation. And some like to tie this in about the mark of the beast. If thy hand offend thee, oh, you got the mark of the beast in your hand, cut it off. It's not what he's talking about literally, okay? Are your hands touching things that they shouldn't? Okay, he's talking about separation, you know, separating yourself from these things, okay? Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, their worm dieth not. I believe that where it says their worm dieth not is a reference unto the soul. Now, does that mean that our soul is shaped like a worm? I have no idea. I have no idea. But see, if you were to continue reading, especially in the book of Revelation, where the smoke of their torment riseth up forever and ever, and to burn forever in the lake of fire, soul annihilationism is heresy. Okay? They base it off of Matthew 10, 28. And he is able to destroy your soul. But he doesn't. You're going to be tortured forever and ever and ever and ever tormented your worm I believe that's a reference unto your soul their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched the worm your soul and if thine eye offend thee pluck it out it's not talking about literally are you looking at are you setting wicked things before your eyes and if thine eye offend thee pluck it out it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Again, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Hmm. I, I skipped one. I'm sorry. Verse 45. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. L let me reread that again. I'm sorry. I just messed that up. Verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Verse 45. Sorry. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Are your feet taking you to places where you shouldn't go? Huh? Are your fingers touching things that they shouldn't? Repent of it. Be separate. Are your feet taking you to like a bar or to your adulterer's, adulterer's uh, house, huh? Or going someplace that you shouldn't? And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now, and if thine eye offend thee, looking at things you shouldn't, setting wicked things before thine eye, Pluck it out. It is better, better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. 
But the soul is the eternal part of who you are. God is able to destroy the soul. But he's not going to. The just will be reserved on, for punishment for eternity in the lake of fire. Just like those whom the Lord declares righteous will be with him in heaven for eternity. Your soul is eternal. Okay? Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and we will be done. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Please ask this chapter 12, verse 7. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 is talking about how when we get old, things deteriorate with time. Okay? Actually, it would do good to read this entire chapter. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. When the sun or the light of, or the moon, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, talking about having feeble legs, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease, because there are few grinders, your teeth, okay? And those that look out of the windows be darkened, losing your eyesight as you get older, and the doors be shut in the streets. When the sound of the grinding is low, losing your hearing in your old age, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. Uh, you, most people, uh, when they get older, they are uh, early risers in their older age, okay? And the daughters of music shall be brought low again, referencing the hearing. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust Return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. You're going to go, your body will go to the earth, and your spirit is going to go back to God. God gave you life. And it all goes with God. It all begins with God. It all goes to God. It's, it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Okay? You have life today, light in your eyes, breath. It's because God gave it to you. You, doesn't matter who you are, you're going to give an account to God. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. And that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. Much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And that's, that holds true for today. Because every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. The spirit is life. Likened unto wind. It moves. It moves you. It gives life. Okay? Your soul is the undying eternal part of of who you are okay okay so that is how great question dear sister hopefully hopefully this has answered that question what is the difference between a spirit and a soul and how to where to go in the scriptures 
on how to answer such. Okay? So that is going to be it for this video. A little bit longer than I had wanted it to be, but this was an important subject, an important question. Okay? There is a vast difference between a spirit and a soul. They are not the same thing. Okay? Animals have a body and a spirit. Elephants, horses, cats, dogs. They have a spirit and a body. They don't have a soul. Man was made in God's image. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? God in the Old Testament, when he appeared in the Old Testament in the form of a man, okay, he had a spirit, soul, and body. In the Garden of Eden, he was walking in the garden. He had a body, okay? But the difference is, in the New Testament, he was born, made of a woman, made under the law, okay? In the Old Testament, when God appeared as a man, he just appeared as a man, okay? The difference is, in the New Testament, God manifest in the flesh was made of a woman made under the law. He was birthed he, into this world. That's the difference. In the Old Testament, you look at, I, I believe that the phrase is amphipomorphic, or I'm mispronouncing that. But when God appeared as man in the Old Testament, he just appeared as a man. He had a body. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? He was a man. In the Old Testament, yes, he was when he appeared as a man. The difference is, in the, in the New Testament, he was birthed into this world. Okay? That's the difference. Okay? That's the difference. To live a life on this earth, under the law, to do what you and I could never do perfectly. Keep the law perfect. So, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully this has helped uh, and answered some of your questions. I'm um, going to get this uploaded. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do any questions or comments, go ahead and leave your videos. And uh, those of you who are going to take offense of this, and I know who you are, your time's coming. Your time's coming. So light it up there, tough guy. So, thank you, brethren. Pray for one another. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you. We'll see you in the next video.